Hello my friends, today we are editing another infrared image and we'll take this image from this to this. Again, this is the image we'll start with and we'll end up with something like this. Let's see how we create this edit. By the way, this uh, image was taken with the A7 II that was converted to infrared 720 nanometer. So let's see how we will edit this. The first thing I want to do is to fix the white balance. And for that, I have a custom profile that I created. If you do not know how to create this, I do have another infrared tutorial where I show how to create this DNG profile. And now our white balance looks a lot better. Close that and the image is overexposed. I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit. I'm going to add some contrast. I'm going to bring down the highlights a little bit. I'm going to open up the shadow some to get more detail into the bridge. Add some white, hold down option while you move the whites to the right. I don't want to be clipping anything. And then hold down option and move the blacks to the left until we have a little bit of pure black, something like that. Then I will also add some texture, maybe around 20 and a little bit of clarity, maybe around 15. For the vibrance, I will be adding around 20 vibrance, 19, that looks good. And then scrolling down to the sharpening, I will leave the default at 40 and move the mask and slider to the right while holding down option. And this will create a mask and now we are only sharpening the trees and the bridge and not the sky. Great. One more thing. I think my image is crooked. So I will go into my cropping tool and use this angle um, tool. And I want to make sure that one of these lines is completely straight. Something like that. Accept the changes and now our, our bridge is straight. We need to move this uh, image into Photoshop to do a channel swap. To do so, go Command E to send the image into Photoshop. And now in Photoshop, we need to do our channel swap. For that, I will go over here into Adjustment Layers and create a Channel Mixer Adjustment Layer. We'll start with the red channel. The red channel is at 100. I am going to set it at 0 and then the blue uh, the blue slider, I will put it at 100. Now we want to go into the blue channel and take the blue to 0 from 100. So it's 0. And I'll move the reds to 100. And this is how you do a channel swap. Now if you like the way the image looks right now, you can stop right there. But I will play around more with it and add some more colors. First thing I like to do is to make the blue more blue because it's too cyan and I want it to look more blue. For that, I'll make another adjustment layer, go to Hue and Saturation, and then I will go into my Cyan's and I'll just shift the hue to the blue until I get something I like, something like that. And that looks a little bit more natural. Now, another thing I want to do is sharpen this image because this uh, camera and lens combination is not the sharpest and we need to sharpen it. To sharpen it, first I need to do a stamp layer. To create a stamp layer, Click on Command, Option, Shift, and E, and this will create this stamp layer. The stamp layer is like a picture of all the adjustments you've done underneath. So with this stamp layer selected, now I will go into Filter, Other, and High Pass. Into the High Pass, I want to make sure I'm here on the bridge, and you want to start from zero and move your radius to the right until you see some good definition but no color or halos. So for most of my images, 2.2 seems to work really well. So I will click OK to accept that and then change the blending mode of this layer from normal to overlay. And now our image is sharpened. I need to make another stamp layer because I want to work with the Nick collection. So for that, I'll click Command Option Shift E one more time. And now I have another stamp layer. And now I will go into Filters, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 5. And this is a fantastic plugin to use with your infrared images. The filter I'm looking for is this Bicolor Filters. And if I open this um, arrow, you see I'm presented with a whole bunch of, let me see a full screen, 
a whole bunch of filters and these ones are really really cool for you know to use on your infrared you have even more colors if you go here on the right and let's see which one will look good you know i think i will go with this maybe moss one and i like that one now the problem with this uh, preset is that it's turning my sky into the cyan again and i want to keep my blue color that i originally have well, to preserve that, you can use this control point. You see, I have two control points here. One is with plus, one is with minus. If you use the plus ones, then you are affecting this, are applying this preset to that specific location. And if you click on the minus and use it, then you're taking away the effect from this location. So now you see, this is my original blue under this um, circle. This is the radius of my masking, if you will. So I'll do something like this, but then I need to duplicate this point and move it across the sky to bring back the original sky. To duplicate this point, just hold down option and keep dragging and create multiple points until you cover the sky. And now we have our original sky back and just click apply. This will send it back into Photoshop. It takes a couple of seconds for it to load. And there is our image before we applied the color effects pro and after and i like that better now i feel like my image is overexposed so i will create a curves layer and just bring down the overall exposure a little bit and that looks pretty good now yes i do know that the sky reflects the same color in the water and the water should be blue too but this is just a creative choice i just wanted to have more colors in it and i didn't want it to be all blue if you don't like this kind of edit that you can keep with your blue sky and blue water and stop right there but i just wanted to add something extra to the image so let's see this is the image we brought from lightroom into photoshop and after our edits we ended up with something like that now as the last thing i want to do is to create a vignette i want to bring the attention more to the middle of the image and to do so i will um go into my elliptical marquee tool and i will create an ellipse something like that if you hold down the bar while you're creating the ellipse you're allowed to move it anywhere you want on the screen and now i will create a curves adjustment layer and i will bring down the exposure now you see i'm darkening the inside of my ellipse i wanted to you know darken the outside to create a vignette so with the mask selected, command I to invert it. And now we have a nice vignette, but the transition is very harsh. The edge is harsh, so we need to feather that. If you click on your mask, then the mask dialog will show up here and feather slider, move it all the way to around 700 pixels. And that will give you a really nice vignette. You see how you can see how it's feathered over here. If I move it back, it's very harsh and then you can move it up to around 700 pixels and that gives you a really nice feather and if you feel it's too dark go back into your uh, curves over here and you know adjust it to whatever brightness you want for me i think that looks nice and now the last thing to do is just flatten our image and there is our infrared colored image i hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.